Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Wendy from Bake with Baker B. Do you make videos? Do you ever have any problems getting the right lighting for your videos? If you do, and you are interested in a DIY solution instead of an expensive purchase, then this video is for you. To solve this problem, I made myself a softbox for my lights. It works really well, so I want to share this solution with you. So what does a softbox do? It aims to create a soft soft of light that can minimize harsh shadows. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Watch carefully. Without the softbox. With the softbox. Without the softbox. With the softbox. It makes a real difference, right? I have been using this light for years and I always struggle to get the lighting right in order to make my filming look better. No matter where I position it, it isn't right. Stick with me to the end because I will finish one extra tip that will make your homemade softbox even more secure. If you have the same problem, look no further. Let's get started. Step number one, planning. This is a very important step because it determines how big your softbox will be. We need to work around the limitation of the light. Just like mine, if it is too big, it can't tilt down to my desired angle. On the other hand, if it is too small, the softbox ends up not big enough to achieve the effects that I want. After the measurement, I worked out from the light bulb to the tilt part of the stand, which is around 10 cm. Now I can decide the base of the softbox is 20 cm by 20 cm. Step number two, prepare the materials and the tools. The main material for this project is cardboard, so I cut it out from a box, but be careful, it is better to put a pair of gloves on to prevent any accidents from happening. Here I have four pieces of cardboard and each piece should be big enough to create a trapezoid for the soft box, and I will show you how to do it in the next step. Also, you will need foil, duct tape, double-sided tape, a glue stick, some clips, a diffuser which is a bin bag, but you can use parchment paper or cloth, and some black paper, but this is optional if you want your soft box to look more appealing on the outside. Now for the tools, you will need a ruler, a pencil, a craft knife, a pair of scissors, and a cutting mat. That's it. Step number three, cut out the five pieces. Piece number one is the base. I will need a 20 cm by 20 cm square piece. Try to measure the pieces as accurately as you can, so that it will be a lot easier when you assemble all five pieces together. Then cut it out carefully using a craft knife. Don't forget to place the cutting mat on the work surface to avoid any damage on it. To make sure the light is at the center, I drew a cross on it and found the center. Then I measure the diameter of the light holder and mark it down using a ruler. Use the light holder to trace a circle onto the marked area. Just like this. Then cut the circle out to create a hole in the center for the light holder. Now the base is done. Now let's move on to the piece number 2 to 5, which are the four panels of the softbox. They should look like this. Let me show you how I did it. First of all, I need to decide the height of the panel. As you can see, there are two natural folds on the cardboard. So I decide the height of it is up to the second natural fold, which is 33.5 cm. Then I marked a few points onto the cardboard to make sure the accuracy, so that I can have a complete straight line which is parallel to the top. Alright, the height is done. I need to find the middle point of the base so that I can have a symmetrical trapezoid. The width of the cardboard is 52 cm. That means I need to leave 16 cm on each side for my base. Now join the four points together and cut out the shape. Thank you. 
it should look like this. Now use this as a template and continue to create three more. Next, because I want to create a rim for the softbox so that I can clip the diffuser onto it instead of sticking it. But if you just want to stick the diffuser on, you can skip this step. The good thing about creating this rim is I can change the diffuser whenever I want or I can easily change the light bulb if it is broken. Just give it more flexibility. To create a rim, first I cut out four pieces of L-shaped cardboard. The length is 18 cm and the width is 30 cm. You can see it on the screen now. Why 18 cm? I just based on the length of the cardboard. It doesn't have any meaning. 3 cm is because I think it is the right width for me to clip the diffuser on comfortably. Once the drawing is done, cut it out carefully. Then use it as a template to create three more. Now I need to create four long strips to complete the rim. The length is 23 centimeters, but maybe I will need to trim them shorter when I join the strips and the L-shaped pieces together. Longer is better than shorter, isn't it? Then cut them out one by one. You should end up with something like this. Step number four, wrapping and covering. First of all, wrap the four panels with foil. Make sure the shiny side is facing you. Apply some glue on the cardboard and stick the foil onto it. Then cut out the excess using a pair of scissors, just like this. On the other side of the panel, I'm going to stick the black paper onto it to cover the cardboard using double-sided tape so that the softboard will look nicer. But if you don't mind the cardboard, as I mentioned before, you can omit this step. But trust me, spending time to do this one more little step will make the outcome look entirely professional. Sometimes it's not just about the functionality, it's also about the satisfaction. Then use a pair of scissors to trim off the excess paper. Finally, wrap the long side of the panel using duct tape to protect and strengthen the edge. Repeat the same process for the other three panels, then you will end up having four panels like this. Now for the base, the process is pretty much the same as wrapping and covering the panels. Apply some glue onto the cardboard and stick the foil on, shiny side facing up. Cut out the excess and trace along the circle in the middle using a craft knife. One side is done, now for the other. Stick the double-sided tape for the black paper. Cut out the excess and the circle as well. Now for the pieces of the rim, I wrapped them by using duct tape to strengthen them. There are in total 8 pieces. It sounds quite a lot to wrap, but I do think it's worth it to create this extra feature in order to give this softbox the maximum flexibility. It allows me to change the diffuser easily to create different effects. Finally, all the wrapping and covering is done. Let's move on to step number five, assembly. First, get two panels on a flat surface. Then attach them together using duct tape. Make sure they are perfectly lined up, just like this. To secure them, tape the other side as well. Continue to attach the other two panels as I mentioned before, if your measurement is accurate, this part shouldn't have any problems. The outcome should look like this. I'm sure you should be pretty proud of yourself at this point. We are nearly there. Let's attach the base using the duct tape. Make sure all four edges are lined up with the top of the panels. 
Next, use the duct tape to cover the seams in the middle because I don't want to see the cardboard. Mm, this step is just for cosmetic purposes, nothing to do with the structure. <laughs> Alright, back to the business. You will need to wrap some duct tape around the hole to stop it from tearing because this is the main area to hold the soft box. The inside should look like something like this. Now, let's attach the pieces that we created for the rim. It is relatively simple. Just attach the four corners first using duct tape. Make sure each corner lines up with the edges of the panels because it will be easier and neater to join the corner pieces with the strips together afterward. Stick the duct tape on each corner piece on both sides to secure it. Continue this step until all four corners are on. Now for the strips. Did you remember that I mentioned before? The strips are longer than I need are better. This is the moment of truth. As you can see, the strip is slightly longer. I would prefer to trim it shorter now rather than not long enough. We need to join two corners together using one strip. I eyeball it to trim it to the length that fits in between. Then I join them together using duct tape to secure them. Continue to trim the strips in order to fit them in between the corner pieces and tape them on both sides as well. Just like this. Now the softbox is done. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah! Step number six, illumination. Finally, let's get our DIY softbox working. As we measure it really carefully at the very beginning, the light holder should fit perfectly. Then install it onto the light stand and ta-da! Yeah! Here I'm showing you a quick fix by just using duct tape to secure the light holder and the softbox together. It does work well. Please stick with me to the next chapter and I will show you another way to secure them even better. Now screw the light bulb. Oh wow, finally, come to the last step before we turn on the lights. Let's clip the diffuser onto the rim. Here it is, DIY softbox for your filming and photographing. Having good lighting doesn't need to break your bank. Budget friendly and useful DIY softbox. Bonus tip. An extra security step. The materials and the tools that you will need are 8 pieces of sturdy cloth. Here I use denim, some sewing thread, a needle, some velcro strips. It depends on the length of the strips. In total, I used 6 of these 15cm strips and a pair of scissors. First, you need to sew 4 velcro strips onto 4 of the denim pieces. They don't need to be nicely sewed, just secure. Then take one of the remaining denim squares and secure it temporarily on the inside of the softbox. I used some double-sided tape. Then line it up with the denim piece with velcro on the outside of the box. Then sew through the box to secure the two patches of denim together and make a firm base. Repeat this in each corner as I have shown. Lastly, fix the softbox onto the light holder by sticking the velcro strip together. Now you can remove the softbox from the light whenever you need it, just by undoing the velcro strips. By doing this one extra step, you can maximize the usage of the light. I hope you found this video useful and have been inspired to make your own softbox. Have a go, it's fun! If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Um, I do have another DIY project about Piping Tips Organizer, which is an ultimate solution for bakers. You can find your right tips in a second, I promise. And I'm sure every baker needs it. If you are interested in it, check it out. The link is in the descriptions below. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like baking as much as I do. Alright, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye bye!